Spurs are the most basic form of motorsport and I love them. I have competed successfully at state level and won many club and district motor car championships. You can run in your daily driver, a dedicated club car or a purpose built special. About 10 years ago, I built this Motocana Special, Ninja. Everyone who drove it came back laughing their heads off because it was just great fun. But during a period of unemployment, I had to sell it to keep paying my mortgage. Something unavoidable, but that sale is something I have always regretted. I know where Ninja is and could try to buy it back, but I'm going to build a new one. And this is why underneath all this junk is the ideal donor car with 90% of what I need to build a motor car special. When my wife upgraded to a newer Corolla, I got the old one. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. And I've been waiting four years to give it a new life in motorsport. Three years ago, I put the winter treads off my Civic Rally car on the Corolla and did a motor car with it in stock standard form and had a barrel of fun. I figure when I get too old to keep chucking the Civic on my truck and driving the distances around Australia that doing the state hill climb series requires, that I'll still be able to do motor carners because there's a local club grounds less than 20 minutes right from here. I'll show you step by step how to build a motor car special. This is the ideal base in my opinion. It's a compact front wheel drive automatic sedan. I haven't started in three years. Let's see what happens. It's time for tear now. These Toyota Corollas are so reliable, I've never had to do any major work on it since I've been married to Brenda.
just normal run-of-the-mill maintenance. So how do you take a car apart when you've never really done any serious work on it before? In this case, it's a Japanese front-wheel drive hatchback, something I'm used to working on in working with Honda. So there's a lot of similarity. But as you're working on the car, <coughs> as you find the differences, you just slow yourself down, work out the different way you've got to do things. I've got to use the subframes, including the one that goes underneath the, the leading edge of the firewall. Normally I'd take the engine out and then I'd take all those subframes out later. But this time, looking at the car, I do think it's going to be easier to undo the subframes, leave the engine sitting on the subframe and undo the subframes and lift the body off, off over the top. And that'll give me the engine and the subframes all together. It means I won't have to take the drive shafts and the front suspension apart. Because this car has a computer in it, I want to avoid the hassle and expense of having to buy an aftermarket computer and get a wiring loom made. I want to salvage the factory computer and the factory wiring loom. And as you're dismantling the car, you have to give some thought uh, as to how you best preserve the wiring loom. There are some things that obviously won't be needed, like headlights. And what I do is I mark the plugs on the wiring loom as I go, uh, like I've marked the radiator fan clip so that I know that's the wire I've got to keep. Whether or not I'll strip some wires out of the loom or not, it's not really that important. We'll see what happens and what I feel like later on. But the, one of the issues is where does the wiring loom join to the engine? What do you need to, where do you need to undo it so you can separate the, uh, the engine from the, uh, from the electronics that go through and under the dash. And like I said, I'm used to Hondas, but this is quite different. It looks like there's three places where I may have to undo the wiring loom, where it goes around the engine bay and it comes back through on the driver's side into the driving compartment. It does the same on the passenger side. And it looks like the main engine wiring loom goes back through the middle of the firewall to the computer, which is down probably behind the dash. So my next job to be able to unplug that loom, because I don't want to cut it, is to um, find where that plug goes from the engine to the computer so that I can undo it. And that means taking out all the dashboard. Here's a couple of cases in point. I could cut it off, but it's just easier to leave it attached to the wiring loom means I won't have any problems. Uh, and another case here is this major fuse box, which includes the EFI. And uh, to be able to uh, disconnect the wire going to the engine, I have to remove the base from underneath and unclip those plugs, which allows me to take that with the engine. And then the wires that connect into that, I can um, remove the wiring loop. Now I can get rid of all the heater and air conditioning ducts and find where that computer is up against the firewall. Somewhere in there <laughs> is the computer. <laughs> Whenever I cut a wire off a loom from something that's obvious, that there is no connector here. Uh, this is for the, uh, or was for the heater fan. So I know I'm not, I know I don't need it, and I know it's not going to affect the ignition. But I still mark it so that, uh, so what it was, so that when I've got that wiring loom sitting on the garage floor, and I've got no idea what anything it used to connect to. I've got it label and I know it's got nothing to do with the car running. So I mark this uh, and I'll do that all the way through as I go. Uh, you can see I've even marked plugs. This is marked passenger door 
used to feed all the wires out to the electric windows and the mirrors and so forth. Um, and even though I'm not using it, once again, I've marked it. That way, if I want to uh, thin out the wiring loom, I can follow the wires back and delete them. Um, but I never do anything like that until after I've got the wiring loom installed in, in my new car and the engine is running. And then I do it bit by bit because if you cut off a whole lot of things and then the engine won't start, you just don't know what it is that you've eliminated that you need for the ignition and the engine to run. Now I've got all the heating and cooling and the dashboard out of the way. At last, there's the computer. And there's the wires that go to the engine. So by unplugging these two plugs, I'll be able to pull them through and take the engine out. So that's why I had to do all this work just to get to those plugs.